Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi and I'd like to welcome you back to this exciting series that uh, we began a while ago now, or uh, you know, in terms of uh, critiquing uh, some of the early Quranic manuscripts and exposing a practice of correction that existed in there. And the work we're doing is based on a book published by Dr. Daniel Brubaker, and the book is called 20 Examples of Correction in Early Quran Manuscripts. And with me here, as you notice, Dr. J. Smith, and he and I have been going through these manuscripts, slide by slide, image by image, to point out this practice and some of the damage uh, to the claim that the Quran is unchanged and it's perfectly preserved and so on and so forth. Dr. J., I think you have at least two more examples to address in terms of this issue. Yeah, these are two that Dan has put into his book as addendums, uh, so to speak, that go beyond the 20 that he exampled. And he wanted to put these two in because he felt it was is important that we show some of the corrections that are done concerning the coverings and the coverings overwritten, which as far as I'm concerned are some of the most damaging because if you're gonna tape over uh, a letter or word or phrase, and then if you actually write over top of it another word or phrase, that's pretty much of an admission that this is human intervention. That's right. But more so than anything else, the only other thing that I could think of would be the e erasers. <clears throat> erasers are damaging enough. These are even more damaged because they're not even trying to, they're not even trying to hide the fact that they are correcting it. This is like what you do when you have a typewriter and you put white out. This is like Correct. a white out. But in this case, it's with tipping. They didn't have white out in the, in the days they were doing this. So let's look at the first slide here. And here is uh, from the Husseini manuscript in Cairo. So sometimes it's called the Cairo Musaf. Other times it's called the Husseini or the Kyrene text is another word they use for right, it. Right, right. And it's uh, Surah 2, I 191 to 93. So there are three different, uh, three different verses here. Daniel has found eight different coverings. Now these are not coverings that, uh, that ha have uh, writings over top them. They're just coverings and they've left them blank. So it seemed like a process that was cut short maybe. <clears throat> Possibly. Uh, we don't even know if uh, Daniel first thought that maybe this is, these were just bad paper and that's why they had to cover this to protect the paper. So he looked on the back side of it. He's, uh, he was actually there to, uh, to see these firsthand and there was no, there was no problem on the back side. There was no, uh, uh, any idea that there were cracks or that there were scrapes or that there were holes that need to be covered up. Right. Nothing whatsoever. So these are intentional coverings it looks like they're either changing, and they were planning to change and write something over top, but eight of them in one page, it almost makes it difficult. We're not gonna go through each one of them. It's not that important. You can see we've written up there where, what they are and uh, what you can see of them. What I think more, much more damage is the next one we're gonna show. Uh, the next one, if you look here on the slide, this one is also from the Husseini manuscript. And it is the Surah chapter 13, verse 11 to 12. Now there are th three distinct coverings here. You can see them quite easily. You don't have to have a high definition to see this one. Right. And if you just, the, the first one's in the first line, the second one is down on the second to the bottom line, and the third one is on the bottom line itself. Now, uh, this is the first time you're seeing this, isn't it? Uh, that's true. So you, as just seeing it for the first time, what's your impression when you look at this? Well, I mean, I, I, the, the initial impression, even if I didn't see the tape itself, and may, maybe we can show the slide right now so I can explain uh, why uh, I was alarmed. Uh, I'm going to circle something right now. This word right here, I can tell right away the thickness of the pen is different. The style is slightly different. It's thicker, and also it's a different ink. It's, it's darker, you know, that means it's fresher. Yeah. And uh, I can tell something is happening, you know. Also, another thing uh, that I noticed, I mean, this is unusual elongation of the letter calf and, uh, you know, uh, something that, you know, you don't write it this way, typically. Uh, why would you do this? For instance, uh, here is uh, fee, you know, which is a very small uh, word. They could have put this right here. And even the one after, it's not like there was a, a long word that they could not really fit and they tried to decorate it that way. Not at all. So you, I'm seeing and noticing things and even this right here is another elongation that is unusual. So this is my first impression right here. So what you're saying is there in, in the, the second one, the middle one that you have uh, circled in red, that one 
the entire line has has a covering on it. And rather, so that was a long set, that was a sentence, and a whole sentence has been right. covered and over. And I'm going to clear these so I can show people the lines that you're referring to, by the way. So now they have replaced it with just letters. Exactly. Elongated it to make up more room in a completely different color, in a right. completely different nib, a completely different style. And here is like the edge of the covering here. And here is also the edge of the covering right here. You're putting it in blue there. And yeah. here is the edge in the covering right here. So, so you can certainly see the coverings. And you can certainly see that whole sentences have been censored, rewritten right. with just two or three words. Which we don't know really what was underneath it. Uh, and the fact that they elongated it, uh, Jay, indicates to me that they're not rewriting the same thing. No. There was a couple of words that they covered, and now they were forced to fill the gap, basically. Oh, man. To me, that's probably one of the most damaging run right there. Absolutely, because... And Dan has hundreds of these. these because you're stuck with the space, right? You know, you when are. you're stuck with the space, you have to figure out a way to be creative now. What is interesting, what you now read there, though, even with elongation, now s fits the 1924 Huff's text. What you actually see is what we see in the standard text. So it's a redaction process. It's, uh, you know, doing it backward, technically speaking. Well, or I would say going doing it forwards because it's What I'm saying is starting from Huffs and go backward to try to match it, you know. That's right. Yeah. It's standardizing. We've been saying yeah. this in all, every yeah. case except for two. They went the other direction. <laughs> they actually kept things in there that's not in the Huffs text. Either that was by ineptitude or because maybe you have a strong-headed scribe. I don't know. And I'm going to go out on a limp. The people who standardized the Huff's first time in 1924 were in Cairo. Makes you wonder. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, this That's thing, interesting this point. one is in Cairo also. This is they they had right. access to this one. That's they right. They have control over this exactly, one. Exactly, exactly. And so therefore, it's and use it as a justification for yeah. their own reading. And they still haven't got to the one on Surah two. They haven't got around to getting it rewritten over top. But it's fascinating. So let's now try to conclude everything we have done. Let's try to bring it all to. A, uh, a, some conclusions here. Uh, I have a number of conclusions, and you jump in at any time. Uh, one of the first conclusions is obviously these are not, the, uh, let, me, let me just make, re reiterate, these are not kira'at, these are not readings, these are not different mm -hmm. readings. Notice uh, in almost every one of these corrections, except for a few, there are no dots, there are no vowelizations. That's right. That's these right. are consonantal letters. Correct. that have changed, consonantal words that have changed, consonantal phrases that have changed. So this is much more damaging than just, say, the kira'ah and the ahruf, which Muslims think we're always talking about. They're always confusing that. No, this is much more germinal. This is much more foundational. This changes the entire structure of the sentence. And because of that, it's more damaging to the claim that the Quran has never been changed. Correct. This has nothing to do with how you say it dialectically. How you say it in Egypt is different than how you say it in Morocco, is different than how you say it in Jordan. These completely change everything because this is not even a how you say it, this is what is written, regardless of how you say it. You still, in any of these manuscripts, you still have to put in the dots. You still have to put in the ahrus. I'm sorry, the dhamma, the kasra, and the fatah, the That's vowelization. Right. That you still have to do on your own. And you can do that depending on where you come from. You c these don't have any of that. Correct. So as an Arab speaker, and you study Arab, this is, your, this is what your doctorate's in. How would you conclude concerning these corrections versus kirat and ahruf corrections? Well, it seemed like there is a, uh, you know, some sort of a standardization of certain readings or certain way of saying words. And that will indicate also somebody can make a case where, where, the, where was the region that this was done at or which reading we're trying to match. We mentioned already that they're trying to match the Huff's reading. And, uh, uh, you know, if you were to look at other readings, some of these words usually in other readings are different because you can still say it in a different way. That's right, you can still say it any way you yeah. want to. Right. In fact, the fact that there are no dots, there are no vowelization, you would read it a different day than say your Jordanian cousin would read it. That's right. That, so we're not talking about readings. This has nothing to do with the seven readings. This has nothing to do with Ibn Mujahid. This has nothing to do with any of those arguments. This has everything to do with the original manuscripts, how they were written. And the fact that these are 
intentional corrections. Some of them are possibly, uh, like the Allahs, the many Allahs that had been added, were probably something that was added at a later date because they want to emphasize God, God, God in every case. Yeah. True, no problem there. Yeah. When you erase so, you're erasing a previous statement, a previous word, a previous sentence. That is damaging. That's right. And I tell you, there is a number of reasons also why it could be done. It could be you're trying to force a theological teaching. It could be you're trying to force a political, you know, basically uh, underpinning. And maybe <clears throat> even you disagree with the grammatical way it was written. So there is a number of reasons why somebody decided, I don't like the way it's written. It's well, I would say there's a fourth reason, and they're yeah. trying to standardize it to the Huff's text. And that's true. That's because true. in every case, they did yeah. standardize it. So what right. was there did not it did not jive with the Huff's text. And for those of you who are wondering, what we can, you, you've heard us say Huff's, 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 Huff's. You know what we mean. We're talking about the 1924, which be, was only standardized for Cairo, the 1936, the photo condition, which is standardized for all of Egypt, and then the 1985, uh, which is standardized by King Fahd in Saudi Arabia for the whole world. So the standardization... Took, took from 1924 to 1985, uh, 34 years ago, it was finally standardized for the whole world. That's why this one here, this is the Huff's edition. This is only really 34 years old as far as a canonized text. And let me give uh, people an example. You know, we believe Jesus was crucified and died for our sin. How would you feel today if you discovered early biblical manuscripts where any instant that dealing with that issue, the crucifixion, somehow was erased and somebody rewritten something to match today's Bible. That's what's happening. It's a, an effort to try to prove that early Qurans agree with what we have today. It's trying to force that, basically, narrative into the early Quranic manuscripts. Uh we're going to come back to this, and I want to, I want, really want to end with this in some ways. But this is the book that we're pushing. This is the book that we're all talking about. This is the first time you've seen any of these corrections. What's fascinating, Daniel does not come to any conclusions on this. Have you noticed that? Daniel will not come to conclusion because he is nothing more than a scholar. He is looking at the evidence, and he's writing up what he sees. And he presented him. And he lets you come to conclusions. Al-Fadi and I are coming to conclusions. Some of the conclusions we have come to, you can see already, this could be that there is a theological problem, this could be a political problem. I believe it's more standardization problem. They want to standardize one text, which suggests, therefore, that almost every one of these corrections are new. Some of them would not be, like they're in, uh, putting Allah into many phrases. That's to make it stronger so you know who is speaking. It's, it's not he, it's Allah taking he out or he, it is he, then putting Allah in there. there we, you saw that one slide where we had nine different examples of that. And you can even see in, one, in some cases they're all on the, on, on the margins, added at a much later time. But the, ones, the most damaging, the erasers and certainly the coverings that we've just talked about in this episode, of which there are hundreds, this not only standardizes the text, it shows that this is human intervention. And the thing we started out with from the very beginning, Muslims claim it's eternal. So does the Quran, chapter 85, verse 22. Muslims claim it was sent down to Muhammad between 610 and 632. Muslims claim that it, we became canonized in 652 at the time of Uthman. And Muslims claim that it's never changed since the time of Uthman, since the time of Muhammad, since that, well, they don't believe it's great, since the preserved tablets have always stated so. With such a claim, we've pretty well destroyed all four claims now. Have you noticed? Absolutely. In these episodes. Absolutely. No longer can Muslims say it's eternal. Not these, with these corrections. No longer can Muslims <laughs> say that it comes from Muhammad or Uthman because all of these manuscripts are from the 8th and 9th century. All the ones we've looked at are much later manuscripts. They're the earliest they have, but from the 8th and 9th, most of them are from Sana, the Petropolitanus, the Husseini. We've looked at the Topkapi, probably the one that the Muslims like the most. We've looked at quite a few of the Topkapi corrections. And I remember uh, when I introduced this, uh, the people at Speaker's Corner hammered me, and they said, there's 2,270 manuscript variants. They're nothing more than Aleph, the Dagger Aleph that's yeah, been added the Dagger later. Aleph, yeah. That's, that's all they the talk claim about. Usually, yeah. Dan Brubaker was very careful not to show any Dagarov. Some of them are, they're right. 
Look or the, the defective ones. aleph also they call it. Defective so. aleph. None yeah. of these were the defective aleph or the dialect. He didn't use any of these examples. That's why it's so important. He has 35 that he has already that he has found that have nothing to do with dialect. These are consonantal changes. This has nothing to do yeah. with a stylized different that came later. These yeah. are in the earliest manuscripts. So these are hugely damaging because now no longer can Muslims say it's never been changed. These are 20 plus 2, so really 22 changes. Not one of them, not one of them supports the notion that they, this is eternal or sent down or complete or unchanged. Those are the four words I always use when I ask Muslims. Right. And here is how we can support what we said already, that it's a human action. How do we know? <clears throat> because later, later work on the Quran, the 1924, is becoming the standard and now some attempted to go back to earlier manuscripts to modify those to match this standard. Where in fact in the Bible we have earlier manuscripts that we can trace from them where we got here, not the other way around. So what you have just defined is how you get to a critical text. Whenever you talk about critical edition, you go back to the earliest manuscripts and you make sure that the earliest manuscripts become the norm, right? Correct. That's what we mean by critical edition. Here is the that, later edition. Here it's just the opposite way around. Exactly. They've taken the latest edition, which is nothing more than a student named Hafs who died in 796. He, they took him and they made him and they canonized his text uh, in 1924. That's not even 100 years ago. That's 95 years ago. And then they went back to all the earliest one and changed them and corrected them to standardize them to make that text the canon. And I'm going to argue even two other uh, additional points. The reason why it's <coughs> becoming more and more clear that the work, these modifications to match Hafs were done to the earlier manuscripts after Hafs was standardized, because as you looked at some of these manuscripts, they don't have diacritical markings. So it's difficult, by the way, to tell which reading usually when you look at the manuscript. But when you modify certain words to match what you have, it becomes easier. And the second uh, powerful, you know, basically argument against the idea that, oh, no, 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 the early manuscripts were correct. Huff, uh, I mean, the 1924 just matched him. No, the 1924 wasn't based on any manuscript. It's when pushback came, they began to modify earlier manuscripts to try to justify, you see, we have things to justify the reading that we have. Dr. Keith Small helped me with this. And Dr. Keith Small has just died in the last few months. And he used to tell me this. He says, Jay, when you look at the manuscript evidence, and he was the first one to expose this. Uh, back in the 1990s, he was talking about this. And I remember him talking to me private. We were good friends. He said, the Quranic manuscripts are like this. They're like a pyramid. You have many, many, many different manuscripts down here, which start to be coalesced, and finally you get one standard text at the top here, 1924. But all of these are disparate. They're many, and that's what we're finding now. That's why I'm so glad Dan Brubaker has done his work. He knew that, Keith knew that, but he didn't have the evidence for that. Dan Brubaker has given the evidence. The Bible on the other hand is just the opposite. Exactly. You have one text down here that we go down. That's the critical text. As, it, as they get older, they get more and more proliferation, you get many different characters. That's why we know where all the corrections are. That's why, because we have 24,000 manuscripts we can look at. Right. That's right. Now, a good 5,300 Greek manuscripts, 10,000 Latin Vulgates, and another 9,000 in other languages. So looking at all those 24,000 manuscripts, we know where all the corrections are, all the variants are. And we did bring them back down to that first one, the original one, the earliest. So we now know 99.9% .9 what that original one is. And that's what we're using. We're using this one. Can you see? It's just the opposite of what Islam has done. Exactly. Islam needs to do the same. That has yet to be done. Well, Absolutely. we're going to help it. Listen, Amen. it's been fun talking about this. I hope this hasn't been too technical. Please comment on it. Please Same come here, brother. Get to, at the bottom of these uh, these videos. Go and say, tell us and come up with some type of response. Muslims, this is for you as well. But remember, don't make the claims for this book anymore. Don't start saying, please, not in our presence, say it's eternal or sent down to us by a man named Muhammad or even finalized by Uthman, and certainly don't say that it's not changed. It is full of changes. We've just given you 22 of them. And then remember, come on back to this book. Amen. It's, this is the one that doesn't have these problems. Amen. It's the bigger, it's the better book for a good reason. We have already passed every test with this book. And we encourage you to not just trust in its historicity, 
but trust in what it has to say. Look and see how it talks about a God that loves you, a God who comes for you, a God who enters time and space and dies for you, a God who can save you. It's been great having these episodes with you. This is another series we've done that coalesces with the one we did last year. We'll do another one next year as well as new information comes to the fore. God bless you. It's been great to be with you. Amen and amen, and we thank you for your patience with us. Uh, as uh, Dr. J mentioned, maybe we get technical a little bit, but it's necessary really because we anticipate also some of the pushback and arguments against what we're saying. So we want to kind of cater to everybody. We'll try our best to simplify it. But really want to remember also to thank Dr. Daniel Brobaker for this wonderful work that he has done. It's a groundbreaking work without a doubt. And he is certainly uh, have done all of us a favor. And uh, as you've heard, he's not the one who's doing any conclusion. He's just presenting evidence. It's our job now to take this and begin to uh, reach conclusions based on what we're seeing. And the easiest way that we can conclude is that the Quran has changed. Evidence just indicate that. There is no escape from this conclusion. This is the easiest conclusion, actually, that we can make. And that in of itself shoots down the argument that it is an unchanged book, perfectly preserved. That's why I agree with my brother here to invite you, my Muslim friends, my Muslim people, to come to the real book and the real man, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord bless you until we meet again. Have a rich, rich blessings and mercies from him. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com forward slash Sierra International.